students in our last video we had discussed about the effect of temperature on equilibrium constant and today i am going to talk about the evaluation of the heat of reaction so let's discuss this uh, the variation of standard heat of reaction with temperature may be taken into account if the molar heat capacities of different species which are taking part into the reaction are known as a function of temperature so uh, suppose that the heat capacities at heat capacities specific heat capacities specific heat capacity or you can directly write cp at at constant pressure at constant pressure r expressed r expressed as a power function in temperature so we know that cp is equals to a plus bt plus ct square plus dt minus 2 okay then the effect of temperature on the standard heat of reaction may be developed uh, as follows since heat of reaction is the enthalpy heat of reaction is the enthalpy change we know that Uh, heat of reaction what is heat of reaction heat of reaction is the change in enthalpy between the given initial and final state okay so it may be uh, 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 it may be determined by three uh, three path or three steps okay so first let's take uh, just assume first that the standard heat of standard heat of reaction at temperature t1 okay is delta h not t1 and it is known it is known and the desired heat of reaction we need to calculate at t okay so what is heat of reaction the and the reactants we have initially reactants at given temperature t at which the reaction takes place so reaction takes place and we are getting our product okay products at temperature t okay and here we what we have this is called standard heat of reaction so what is heat standard heat of reaction standard heat of reaction means uh, the difference between the product uh, uh, enthalpy uh, change of enthalpy of product minus reactant so this is at t and this is what delta h t so because this is not known so what we do because t1 is known which is the standard heat of uh, reaction at temperature t1 which is known so what we do we just take reactants we bring our reactants at temperature t1 so what we do we just cool cool the temperature okay we just cool the temp uh, cool the reactants up to temperature reactants at temperature T one fine, and here whatever the enthalpy is, that is the enthalpy of cooling the reactant. So this is the enthalpy, enthalpy of cooling reactants, and this is let's take this is delta H one, and now at this temperature, the reaction takes place, and products are formed at at temperature t1 fine and this standard heat of reaction is known this is known so this is at this is called standard heat of reaction at t1 and this is what delta h2 and now because our we know that that we because we want our products at temperature t so we bring back our products uh, from temperature t1 to t and this is called enthalpy of heating enthalpy of heating of products at Uh, there is uh, the temperature uh, will vary from t1 to t2 and this is is called delta h3 okay 
So how we can find out delta HT now you can see instead of going from directly from reactants to product at temperature T, we just follow this path. So uh, it will gives you the uh, heat standard heat of reaction of our this reaction. So delta HT how we can we will get delta HT is equal to delta H1 plus delta H2 plus delta H3 right. So now just write down what is delta H1, delta H2 and delta H3. The first one is the reactants are cooled from temperature T to T1. So delta H1 is summation of reactants from temperature from T to T1 right. Ni, C, Pi, Tt and similarly you can write in terms of stoichiometric coefficients also. So we know that that the stoichiometric coefficient for the reactants it should be equal to it should be negative. So T2, T1, Cp, I, Dt. So this will be equal to summation of delta H1 reactants. Negative sign is so just change it T1 to T stoichiometric coefficient nu i c p i d t and let's take this as our equation number one. Now the reaction is taking place uh, occurred at temperature T1. So the enthalpy change delta H2 is equals to delta H not T1 which is known and third one so let, let's take this as the equation number two and third one is the temperature of the products is raised from uh, T1 to T. So delta H3 is equals to Summation of products T1 to T and I C P I D T and similarly you can write in terms of sorry terms of stoichiometric coefficient C P I D T. So now just substitute all these value into the previous equation. So we have delta H naught. T is equals to delta H in place of delta H1. See what we have delta H1 plus delta H2 plus delta H3. So just substitute all these value. So delta H naught T. So delta H naught T is equals to summation of reactants T1 to T nu I C P I D T plus delta H naught T1 plus summation of products T1 to T nu I C P I D T. So see over here the limit of these two are same. So we can add this. So delta H naught T is equals to delta H naught T1 plus summation of T uh, integral of T1 to T nu I sorry summation of nu I C P I D T. And the summation is the above equation is overall uh, all the species taking part in the reaction. Okay, so let's take this as the equation number 4. You can write delta H naught T is equals to delta H naught T1. In place of this, right, a summation of uh, T1 to integral, we can put delta Cp dt. Okay. And we know that what is delta Cp dt. So we know that Cp is Cp of all i component i a plus bt plus ct square plus d raised to the power minus 2. And what is delta Cp? It is delta a plus delta b plus delta ct square plus delta d d raised to the power minus 2. So what we do, we just uh, substitute over here and we integrate from T1 to T2. So let's integrate this and then we directly substitute into this. So let's take this as the equation number 5 and integrate this equation. So it goes delta Cp dt from T1 to T. And here also or directly I can put T1 to T dt okay so let's just directly integrate this so cp t t delta delta cp okay is equals to uh, this is delta a t plus delta b t 
t square by 2 plus delta c t cube by 3 and plus sorry this is plus plus negative so minus minus delta d 1 by t and limit goes from t1 to t okay so delta a t minus t1 plus delta b uh, by 2 t square minus t1 square plus delta c cube t cube minus t1 cube and then minus delta d 1 upon t minus 1 upon t1 and this is let's take question number 6. Now we have delta h naught t is equals to delta h naught t1 plus delta you just substitute all these values uh, this integral of c okay so uh, here so you just substitute all this value delta a t minus t1 plus delta b by 2 t square minus t1 square plus delta c by 3 t cube minus t1 cube and minus delta d 1 by t minus t1 so here what we do here the constant appearing the, the constant appearing at temperature t1 uh, in this equation uh, can be grouped together to a single constant delta h dash okay so delta h dash in place of all the constants uh, which are appeared in this equation at temperature t1 okay so then your equation has become delta h naught t is equals to delta h dash plus delta a t plus delta b t square by 2 plus delta c t q minus delta d by t. Let's take this as the equation number 6. Now we know that d ln of k upon dt is equals to delta h naught upon rt square. So, d ln of k is equals to delta h naught upon rt square dt. Let's take this as the equation number 7. Okay. Substitute the uh, this value of uh, delta h naught t from equation number 6 to equation number 8. So, sorry, 7. 6 to 7. So, d ln of k is equals to delta h dash rt square plus delta a upon rt plus delta b, sorry, delta b upon 2r plus delta c upon 3r here t minus delta d upon r or t cube. Okay. And here it is d integrate this equation so we get ln of k okay and this will uh, minus delta h dash upon rt plus delta a upon r ln of t plus delta b upon 2r uh, t plus delta c upon 6r t square minus delta d upon 2r 1 upon t square plus c. Let's take this as the equation number 8. And we know that that delta g naught is equals to minus rt ln of k. Okay. So, what we do, we just rearrange this and substitute uh, the value. Uh, this is ln of k. So, uh, just substitute all the values of ln of k from equation number 8 to in this equation number 9. So, what we get delta g naught is equals to c rt rt is cancelled. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, minus delta h dash this rt n this rt will be cancelled plus uh, minus. So, this will be plus because minus sign is there and multiplied by this so this will be negative this is positive delta h dash is positive this is negative minus delta a t ln of t 
okay r r gets cancelled then minus delta b upon 2 t square okay r cancel and t is multiplied by t so t square uh, here minus delta c upon 6 r r cancel t q and then minus minus uh, minus minus plus delta d upon 2 t minus c r t and this is the equation number 10. So equation number 7 can be uh, used for the evaluation of equilibrium constant uh, provided we know that the dependency of uh, so uh, so these are the final equations and equation number 7 uh, can be used for the evaluation of the equilibrium constant uh, provided we know that the dependence of heat capacity is on temperature and we also have enough information for the evaluation of the uh, constant delta h dash and integral constant c okay assuming that the heat capacity data are available in most of the question which we are going to uh, solve uh, in future uh, the this heat capacity data is uh, given or is, it is available in even in the in industry also when we are uh, dealing the real problems this most probably the these type of data are available and the general methods used for the evaluation of delta h dash and uh, constant c if if it is not given right if it is not given usually it is given if it is not given then you can uh, calculate experimentally uh, the, delta, the value of delta h dash and uh, integral method uh, sorry integral constant c so these are the two constant which we need to the information of these two sh must be known then only we can uh, calculate the equilibrium constant right and uh, here this equation with the help of this equation you can find out the standard gives free energy for the any reaction hopefully Thank you.